very still our brothers and sisters let us sign ourselves in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brothers and sisters we are here to praise a great big mighty god so let us begin by praising god the father praising jesus and praising the holy spirit as we take this hymn i praise you we praise you father we praise you son we praise you spirit oh twin world we praise you father we praise you son rising eyes are turning to you we turn to you hope is stirring hearts are yearning for you we long for you that's what we want in this time we want hope cause when we see we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away hosanna hosanna come have your way among us we welcome you lord jesus and the second verse says very beautiful hear the sound of hearts returning to you wow sound of hearts returning to you in your kingdom 
broken lives are made new i am continuing saying why does this happen because when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away who said let us take a minute to go through the words of it to understand it and praise a great big mighty god praise him Let us worship a great, big, mighty God, a God who saves us, a God who is worthy of all our praises. As we are in His presence, let us worship this God of us. I just wanna be there. You. Be where you are. 
Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Our topic for today is to grow in personal relationship with the Trinity. We are all called to be disciples. To be a disciple, one must have a personal relationship with the Blessed Trinity. It is called the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Today we are going to focus on how to grow in a personal relationship with God our Father. In prayers, we always invoke God as Father. The Lord's Prayer, in the I believe, and many other prayers. We also make our prayers of intercession, invoking God our Father through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also meet our God the Father in His Word. 1 John chapter 3 verse 10, 1 tells us, see what love the Father has lavished upon us that we are called children of God and that is what we are. Similarly, in the book of Corinthians, 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6, Yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist. And so my dear brothers and sisters, we meet God our Father Every day in our prayers, we meet God our Father. Each time we meet or read the Word of God. Yet, in spite of all this, yet in our prayers and in our Word of God, we hardly have developed a relationship with God. We are not grown up, we are not become matured. And hence, we need to deepen our relationship, our communion, our bonding with God our Father. We are going to focus on some of the divine attributes of God. So that knowing these divine attributes of God will deepen our relationship with Him. 
as we all know god has created us that we may know him love him and serve him and so my dear brothers and sisters in a very special way we cannot love or we cannot grow in a relationship with our god the father unless we know him personally and to know him personally we have to know about his divine attributes today we are going to look at some attributes divine attributes of god namely the asati of god that is god self existence and god's self sufficiency the eternity of god god existence beyond time the holiness of god god is separate from sin and incorruptible the goodness of god that is his kindness is mercy and compassion and the graciousness of god and so my dear brothers and sisters even as we journey to this divine attributes of god let us experience them in a personal way to develop and deepen our relationship with god our loving father the first divine attribute that we are going to look at is the asati of god that is god self existence and self sufficiency god is so independent that he does not need us the book of the acts of the apostle chapter 17 verse 24 and 25 says it is god who made the world and all that is in it rather it is god who gives everyone life breath and everything and when we read the book first book of the bible in the book of genesis we hear the story of the creation of the world how god created the world out of nothing and so my dear brothers and sisters god self existence and self sufficiency is proved to us that out of nothing god can create anything and everything the second divine attribute of god is the eternity of god god exists beyond time god has no beginning and no end the title that is given to god in the book of revelation is the alpha and the omega on the night of the easter vigil we bless the candle with this words the alpha and the omega reminding us that god has no beginning and no end the third divine attribute of god is the holiness my dear brothers and sisters god is all holy there is no trace of sin or incorruptibility is separate from sin and that's why the book of isaiah chapter 6 will thrill was three will tell us holy 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 is the lord god of host and so when isaiah says holy 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 he tells us that the most important and the most beautiful attribute of god is the holiness this word holy has been repeated thrice to define the 
utmost holiness of God. The fourth attribute that we are going to look at is the goodness of God. God is the final standard of good. That's why Saint Jesus says in Saint Mark's Gospel, chapter ten, verse eighteen. Jesus said, "No one is good except God." And so, my dear brothers and sisters, all that God is. and all that god does is worthy of approval for example when the israelite were led to egypt that was not according to the wickedness but according to god's plan today we are suffering because of covid 19 st paul answers this question of god's will in the book of romans chapter 11 verse 21 god did not spare the natural branches he will not spare you either see the kindness and severity of god severity towards those who fell but kindness to those who pro- are is provided to those who remain in his kindness and so my dear brothers and sisters the goodness of god is so outnumbered that his kindness is mercy and his love is for our us to generation after generation and so my dear brothers and sisters the divine attribute of god's goodness is always for us around us the fifth attribute that we are going to look at is the good graciousness of god the graciousness of god is the key principle for our christian life the book of exodus chapter 34 verse 6 tells us the lord the lord a merciful and a gracious god slow to anger and rich in kindness that is forgiveness and fidelity that is faithfulness mm-hmm. and so my dear brothers and sisters in the book of exodus chapter 34 verse 6 defines us the most beautiful attribute of god that is gracious kind merciful forgiving faithful after learning about the divine attributes of god my dear brothers and sisters it is time for us to respond as we heard as we have as we have heard earlier that god created us that we may know him and to love him and so my dear brothers here comes the second step for us to love god and so my dear brothers and sisters we are going to look only at two attri- divine attributes of god the first is the goodness of god have you been wasting the goodness of god we read in the bible in the psalm 34 verse 9 we says taste and see how good the lord is and we have classical examples in the new testament of people who experienced the goodness of god the samaritan women at the well Zacchaeus the tax collector the woman caught in a adultery each one of them personally experienced the goodness of god in their life our favorite psalm is psalm 
speaks about the praise of divine wisdom, goodness of God. This entire psalm is so rich. It defines the goodness of God for us. My dear brothers and sisters, this psalm had become a part of my prayer life. When I used to pray for my brother, who was almost lost in 2009. And my dear brothers and sisters, this psalm worked so wonderfully and marvelously, bringing him to life and gave him life in abundance. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the goodness of God is not to be wasted, but rather we have to use it for our betterment, for deepening our relationship with God. The graciousness of God, my dear brothers and sisters, have we been wasting the grace of God that has been given to us? St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 1, 1 says, We appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. And so St. Paul says in his letter to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he says, But by grace of God, I am what I am. His grace has been not been ineffective in me. I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God in me. And my dear brothers and sisters, the same St. Paul says, where sin increases, grace abounds much more. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we take home these two divine attributes of God, the goodness of God and the grace of God, let us enrich ourselves. Let us enrich our life daily by divine, these divine attributes of God, that they may become our garments so that our lives may not remain the same and that we may grow in our relationship with our God. Let us end this time as we meditate upon, as we close our eyes and offer our prayers to God. The book of Numbers says, Let the Lord your God, that the Lord bless you and keep you. That the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Let the Lord look upon you kindly and give his peace. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, let us grow in spiritual maturity. Let us grow in our relationship with God the Father through the word that is us, given to us. Praise the Lord.